Right now, let's focus on how to sketch families of rose curve. Previously, we already learned on how to sketch families of circle, families of limacon. So, basically, there is a general equation that will represent rose curve, like what we have discussed with families of circle and families of limacon. And the general equation that will produce a family of rose curve is given like what you see on the slide presentation such as r is equal to e cosine n theta or r is equal to e sine n theta so both of this general equation will produce families of rose curve so the difference between equation general equation that will produce families of circle and general equation that will produce families of rose curve lies at the argument of sine and cosine function. Previously, when it comes to um, families of circle, when n is equal to 1 only, we consider only up to that value of n. But what will happen if you have the value of n is no longer 1, instead more than 1, such as for, for example, I'm going to ask you to sketch r is equal to 5 cosine 2 theta. So this will no longer produce families of circle. Instead, it will produce families of rose curve. So this is how you differentiate between general equation that will produce families of circle or families of rose curve. Alright? Uh, normally, when you try to sketch the rose curve in in the first time, you will see that it will take so many steps just to sketch rose curve. But if you do a lot of exercises, by that you can roughly imagine what will happen to the rest of rose curve, how many petals you have to consider. So right now, I would like to tell you uh, how to sketch rose curve uh, for the first time. Okay, So in this case, when it comes to rose curve, you have to determine how many petals you need to sketch when it comes to family of rose curve. It all depends on the value of n. As you can see from here, we have this um, table that should tell you uh, how many petals you need to sketch for a rose curve. So let's take a look at this equation that will produce rose curve. So in this case, you are given with r is equal to 3 cosine 3 theta. So as you can see from here, the value of n is equal to 3. So it should tell you, there is a note that mentions if n is odd, you have to sketch n number of petal. If n is even, you have to sketch 2 times n number of petals. So in this case, 3 is obviously odd. Therefore, three number of petals so you have decided to sketch three number of petals so according to the example we do provide the steps inside the slide presentation but perhaps what i can do right now is uh, guide you through all the methods involved inside the slide presentation so in this case you know that when you have polar coordinates you have 2 pi the maximum so right now we are trying to decide the backbone of each rose petal so in this case you will have uh, three number of petals okay number of petals is equal to three so according to the first step as you can see on the slide presentation you will have to determine the location of the backbone for three number of petals so you will have 2 pi over 3 so it should tell you in every 2 pi over 3 there exists a petal so this is the first step so in every let me write down to you here in every 2 pi okay over 3 there exists a petal okay so right now, we need to decide the location of the first petal so that we can move forward. So as you can see 
from the slab presentation, we need to determine the backbone of the first petal. So in this case, step number two, determine the backbone of the first petal. Alright, so you are going to let it equal to R is equal to the maximum length of the rose petal. Uh, I believe I did not mention earlier regarding the length of the rose petal. The length of the rose petal is depending on the value of A. So in this case, the length of the rose petal is equal to 3. Alright, so I'm going to equate R is equal to 3 cosine... Uh, 3 theta with the maximum length of the rose petal. So in this case, I know that it's equal to 3. So I will get 3 cosine 3 theta is equal to 3. Cosine 3 theta is equal to 1. So let's try to solve it. You can use your calculator by right. Cos 3 theta is equal to 1. 3 theta is equal to cos uh, inverse shift cos. If you use your calculator, you will get 0. So from here, theta is equal to 0 degree. So it should tell you that the backbone of the first petal lies at theta is equal to 0 degree. So we need to determine the location of the rest of the petal. So since we know that theta is equal to 0, therefore, first petal, the backbone of the first petal is at theta is equal to 0. Second petal, okay, by using the value that we have in the first step, theta is equal to 0, 0 plus 2 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is the location of the backbone of the second petal. The location of the third petal lies at theta is equal to 0 plus 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. In this case, I will get 4 pi over 3. So, I managed to determine the location of backbone of each rose petal. So, let me sketch the polar coordinate system first. And I need to locate where is theta is equal to 0. This is theta is equal to 0. And 2 pi over 3 is equal to 120 degree. Perhaps somewhere over here, theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. And we have to locate where is 4 pi over 3. 240 degree. 240 degree. And this is the location of theta is equal to 4 pi over 3. Alright, right after we manage to determine the backbone of each rose petal, now we would like to set the boundaries. For example, we would like to uh, double confirm the location of the, the rose petal. Either it will exceed the first and fourth quadrant like what we have when we have theta is equal to zero. And what is the boundaries for theta is equal to two pi over, uh, over three? when we are talking about the backbone of the second petal. So this is considered as one of the important steps. So that right after we are very clear with the boundary, so we can sketch our petal at the right place. Right now, we move to step number three as what you can see on the screen. You will need to determine the tangent line. So the tangent line can be obtained when you have r is equal to 0. So in this case, when r is equal to 0, 3 cosine 3 theta equal to 0. Cosine 3 theta is equal to 0. So you recall the basic graph of cosine function. So I believe I will end up with something like this. So it will repeat itself since graph cosine is periodic having period 2 pi eh, for this r is equal to cosine theta okay not r is equal to cosine theta when we are having y is equal to cosine 
facts here, for example. So the value here is 0 pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2. So as you can see from here, when you have cosine 3 theta is equal to 0, um, there are possible values that will give cosine 3 theta is equal to 0. The first one, you can have pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. And then, theta is equal to pi over 6. 3 pi over 6 or equivalent to pi over 2 5 pi over 6 7 pi over 6 and others so in this case when you have this kind of values um, let us try to refer back to this graph and we try to sketch the boundaries so we have to locate where is pi over 6. Pi over 6 is, is equal to 30 degree. So it will be somewhere over here. And then right after that, pi over 2. Somewhere over here. And then 5 pi over 6 is equal to 150 degree. Maybe somewhere over here. So it should tell you right after you sketch all these tangent lines. Now you know already the boundaries of the curve. Okay. This is the boundary of the first rose petal. So this is the second rose petal. And this is the third rose petal. Okay. So basically, this is your rose curve. Right, so you can apply the same steps to to sketch any rose curve.